it's back. It's time for Foundation Fridays for Over 50s. Thanks everyone for your patience while I took a little hiatus from doing Foundation Fridays. I took about a month and a half off from it because it was summertime and I love to be outside and I love to not wear makeup in the summer. So walking around testing foundation on a daily basis was really kind of driving me crazy. So I decided to take a little hiatus. But my gosh, did the time fly by or what? It's September. We need to get back to the business of being hot and flashy. And part of that includes testing foundations. So I am testing foundations for mature skin. I'm looking for a holy grail foundation that will hopefully make my skin look better than it is. <laughs> I know that's a tall order, uh, or at least not make it look worse than it is. As I told you guys before I took the hiatus, I would look at a few things behind the scenes and come back with a winner. And a winner I have. So today's Foundation Friday is all about Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet. I um, discovered this because a viewer told me about it. He basically wrote to me and said, hey, this is who I am. I really think that you should try this. I really think that you would like it. And so I ran out and I got a sample because uh, Arnaud is like a world-renowned makeup artist who's based out of Paris. He's had his work seen in Elle magazine and Marie Claire. And the clincher on it for me was that he was the makeup artist for Sharon Stone for five years on her Dior ad campaign. So this guy knows his way around a mature face. Let's get into the basics of it. Uh, this makeup retails for $47 for one ounce. It comes in nine shades and it has an SPF of 15. The SPF, the sun protection, is courtesy of octanoxate and titanium dioxide. It is an oil-free, water-based formula. Water is the number one ingredient. It does contain alcohol. Alcohol is about number seven on the ingredient list, so there's not enough in there to really dry out your skin, but I kind of wish it wasn't in there at all. It contains fragrance, but I have never smelled it. Um, everyone, that uh, all the reviews I've seen has said, yes, it has the typical Chanel scent. Um, it doesn't really smell like anything to me, and of all the times I've used it, I've never noticed the scent. But apparently it's in there, there is fragrance in there, so if, if fragrance and alcohol are a deal breaker for you, then this is not for you. Uh, it does contain a tiny amount of vitamin E, but it doesn't really contain any anti-aging ingredients, or any moisturizing ingredients, or anything like that. Uh, it also doesn't contain a lot of silicones. I think there was only one or two silicones in the whole formula, so it doesn't rely on them for that like really silky, slippery feel, um, and so it doesn't have that feel. It's not slippery, but it is silky and velvety and dry feeling, which is one of the things that I really, really like about it. It comes in this black plastic container. It's very sleek, very chic, very Chanel, um, and it just has a little drip spout in there. So you just drip a little bit out on the back of your hand and you apply it with your fingertips. Chanel recommends that this is applied with the fingers. They say it does not need a brush or a sponge and I found that it actually does not work very well with those implements. So fingers is definitely the best way to go. The shade I bought it in is number 40, beige. And um, the shade that I sampled it in was number 30 beige. Now they're both called beige, so you have to do the numbers because 30 was lighter than 40. I found 30 to be a little bit light for me considering that it's summertime. And it is for normal to combo to oily skin types. So if you have dry skin, this also will not be for you, but if you tend to have oily breakthrough or shine in the afternoon, this is um, one of the things that I love most about this product is that while it's providing a velvety matte finish, it's not so matte that it's like, you know, you look like a powder cake. Um, it's a very uh, skin-like matte. It looks very smoothing. It looks, you know, with a, the tiny littlest bit of luminescence or um, glow, but it's not trying to be dewy, it's not trying to be glowy, because I find that those things just makes it shine off all my wrinkles. I find that this soft matte that it has really helps to give a smoothing effect. If you look at it super up, up close, which of course we will do, um, you will see that it really isn't doing anything to, um, you know, make my pores be suddenly invisible, make my wrinkles disappear. That said, it doesn't do anything awful for them either. It doesn't accentuate them, it doesn't get into them and settle into them. So for all those reasons, I absolutely love this. And you know, I don't buy the high-end ones. I sample them. To, that I bought this, hands down, 
this is like the one of everything I've tested so far. This is by far the best. So let's go into the individual days of how I applied it and I'll show you all the up closes and everything and then I'll come back in the end to wrap it up. So for my first try with the foundation, I went ahead and applied it with my fingers. I like to test it the foundation, not a bunch of primers, not a bunch of finishing powders. So for the first time, I put it just over my sunscreen, which was the hydropeptide sunscreen that I like. Um, that is a real silicone based sunscreen. So because I rubbed the foundation in, it did kind of ball up a little bit. I had a couple of little balls on, on my nose of um, where the product didn't react so well, uh, but it wasn't a deal breaker. I could just brush them away and get rid of them. But as you can see in the video, it just goes on so easily and so smoothly. It was a joy to apply with the fingertips. Uh, you do have to work kind of quickly though and in areas because it does dry so very quickly. The feel of it is like silky smooth. It disappears into the skin. Um, it blends so seamlessly. Like I feel like it's on, it makes my skin look better, but you can't see it on my skin. It did wear off a little bit, you know, like in the places where I always touch my face, my chin and the tip of my nose. But overall, I felt like it was really long wearing. And what I liked is that even when it was wearing off a little bit, it didn't wear off weirdly. As it wore off, you couldn't even see it going. Like you can't see it on. It is so weightless. All right, so that was day one. I don't know why I didn't just stop right there, but what the heck I thought, well, let me try it with a brush and let me try it with a sponge. So on day two, I tried it with a mattifying primer because I did find that I did have a little bit of shine in the afternoon. So I wanted to try to mattify it down a little bit more for people who wanted like a complete full on matte looking thing. So I used Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Protector and I use the Kabuki brush. With a primer between your skin and the foundation, it makes it not work as well. I gotta say, that's one thing about this. If you are married to your primer and your setting powder, then you will not be happy with this foundation. Um, other products, other primers, makes it so that it doesn't sink into your skin and look quite as natural. So the application with the brush, uh, it turned a terrific foundation into a not so great foundation. Unfortunately, it didn't look that good. I didn't wear it all day. I didn't come back in hours and show you. So on to day three. Day three, I tried to apply it with a sponge and a smoothing primer. I used the Tarte Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer and I put it on with the sponge over that. And that came out pretty good. Again, it was the same thing where I used a primer it um, kind of sat on the surface and looked more powdery and didn't blend in as seamlessly with my skin. So I didn't love it. The sponge was okay. I think the sponge application could be all right, but I felt like the sponge, because it's so very watery, it just soaked it all up. And it was a waste of, you know, a pretty expensive product to have it just all go into the sponge and not go on my face. This one, I kind of um, took some video footage of me throughout the day so that we could see what it looked like in bright sunlight. It's 82 degrees out. Dog is having a nice swim. I'm really liking how soft and dry it feels, you know? It's on these hot summer days. It's when you have the sunscreen and then the foundation. Sometimes you just feel like sticky and damp and like the stuff doesn't dry or settle. And this stuff is really nice and dry. And I'm really, really liking how it feels and how it looks. And today is uh, day four. And so today I went back to basics. I, you know, learned the lesson that really less is more with this product and really just, you know, decided to put this on over cleaned, moisturized, sunscreened skin and it went on perfectly like a dream. I also did get a more coverage out of it today. I think because that tiny sample bottle that I had with that little, um, like wand thing that you got it out, I was never getting out very much. And so today I feel like I got a really nice, uh, you know, full medium coverage, whereas before I was only managing to get sheer. So I think that um, today is really uh, the perfect day with it. But I'll bring in the footage of five hours out and 10 hours out, and then I will come back to wrap it all up. Five hours have not touched it up or done anything to it. As usual, I went outside for a while. It is another hot, steamy day and um, I think it still looks great. It hasn't faded, it's not wearing off weirdly, it's still not settled in my wrinkles or my pores. It's not overly shiny, but it has gotten a slightly less matte. It is just a little bit luminous, but I actually think it looks kind of nice as a little bit luminous as well. So all in all, it is really working for me.
All right, you guys, it is time for the 10 hour check in on the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet. And I feel like it looks pretty much the same as it did at five hours. It hasn't worn off, it still looks great, lasts all day. It doesn't need any touching up, it doesn't need any powdering. So, all in all, very happy. So let's take it point by point of uh, you know all the things that I like to know about a foundation and I think you you do too. So point number one is the coverage. Those looking for 100% full coverage will not be happy with this. It's too sheer and you will be disappointed. But it does give a nice sheer to medium coverage. It is buildable and it looks nice even built up. It doesn't ever get cakey or heavy or powdery looking. To the finish. It's not completely matte, so if you're looking for something that's a, like a flat 100% matte, it's not that. As you can see, it still has a little, a little radiance. Of course, my video lights are brighter than most light, but I showed you the out in the bright sunlight. You could see it was a little shiny in the bright, bright sunlight, but it's not making me look like a grease ball either. I touched on the pores and wrinkles a little bit already, but let me just reiterate the fact that it does not settle into pores. It does not give you polka dot pores. It didn't erase them, but at least they didn't look worse either. For the wrinkles, it did not settle in any of my wrinkles ever all day, which was awesome. No accentuating the wrinkles, no making them look worse. Um, you know, I, I would pass myself in the mirror later in the day and be like, oh, oh gosh, I look good. I still look good. And you know, it shouldn't be that much of a shock, but it is. Um, so for the feel, I love, love, love how this feels. Um, it is so weightless and comfortable to wear. It's like you're not wearing any makeup at all. And it is hot. It's about 90 degrees and sunny and humid, and it has been. And I don't feel like heavy and hot and damp. Like I said, I keep rubbing it because it feels so dry, like it doesn't come off. It, it just feels so... It, you know, feels like velvet. It feels like matte velvet. What can I say? I mean, they, they really named this the right way. So let's do the phone test. I actually had a really long phone conversation with my dad the other day um, while I was wearing this. I think I was on the phone with him for about 45 minutes. And when I pulled the phone away, nothing. <laughs> Look at how clean that is. Hold on. Let me... Look at that. And of course, we always do the flash photography. So here is the flash picture. So basically, when I'm thinking about each of those aspects of, of a foundation, I kind of put a mental check mark in the good column and the bad column. And it's rare that I have check marks entirely in the good column. And that's what I have on this one. And that's why, ladies, I have to tell you that Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet is going into the category of Holy Grail for me. It fulfills every want and need that I have expressed for a foundation over the last two to three years while I have been out here on YouTube. I started originally saying, isn't there just a foundation that I can slap on with my fingers that makes my skin look better than it is, that covers up what I have to cover but yet looks natural, that I can walk around feeling confident about myself and yet not self-conscious, that everyone's seeing only a mask of makeup? That's what I've been asking for for all oh, these three years, and here it is. Um, so I love it, and I hope that if you purchase it or that you might sample it first, that you will love it as much as I do. I feel so great today that I have something that I can wholeheartedly recommend, at least to people who are like me, who have combo to oily skin, who like a matte finish, who like to put their foundation on with just their fingers. So if you fall into that category, uh, and you want something that lasts all day, looks good all day, helps to hide some of your imperfections, just makes your skin in general look better than it is, then I truly and wholeheartedly recommend this for you. Uh, for people who like a more dewy finish, this will not be for you. For people with dry skin, probably not for you either. But don't worry, the search continues. <laughs> just because I found something that I personally love does not mean that Foundation Friday is over. Uh, of course, Foundation Friday will continue. There are a ton more foundations out there for me to try. I may not be back with Foundation Friday every single week. I think I'm going to approach it as an every other week uh, type thing so that I can do other videos. I only put out two videos a week, so one of them can't be Foundation every single week. It's just too limiting with the other one that I can't get enough talk about the other things that I love to talk about, like 
you know, food and exercise and um, healthy living and other kinds of makeup and of course anti-aging skincare. I have a lot of videos to catch up with on that. So I have to say thank you Arnaud if you are watching. I really appreciate that you took the time out of your day to uh, write me a personal email and tell me about this because it is terrific. So thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate your time. As always, take care and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.